before we get started, guys, please, please check out the merch. Check out uh, the description below for all these cool products, hats, shirts, all kinds of designs dropping all the time. I really appreciate it. What's going on guys? Tweaking Timber Outdoors. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to best rig your rods for any trout fishing situation. So I'm going to break it down into two sections. Your conventional spin and your fly fishing. And this is what I typically like to bring people, uh, what I like to have people bring with them if we're going to try new streams or a stream you're not super familiar with. This is kind of like an all around jack of all trades rig that will kind of let you fish anywhere, anytime. First thing we want to do is we want to look at our fly rig. So there are always a couple things that you should bring with you when you're fly fishing a new stream. Genuinely, you can get by with most applications with a floating line. And on that floating line, you'd like to have maybe a couple tapered leaders and at the very least, a couple spools of tippet. In addition to that, that's going to allow us to fish dirt certain depths in conjunction with our split shot. I like micro split shot, uh, round split shot, and lead free because one, it's required in my state, but two, um, it's just better for the environment. Uh, in addition to that, I don't typically fish a lot with indicators, but indicators are really helpful for newer anglers who like to have the sight aspect of fishing. So uh, when it comes to your fly selection, we look at Nymphsco subsurface. Uh, you have some emergers that kind of fish the film or higher in the column, and then you have dry flies that fish on top. A floating line can fish all of those. In conjunction, sometimes if you have a lot of split shot, really deep water, long tippet and leader, you might want to fish, especially in slower pools, with an indicator. And how you do that, depending on the indicator, but most indicators are either stick on or you take an indicator out of the packaging. Sometimes you can use thingamabobber or airlock style that are pretty easy. Many of them follow suit. These happen to be It's at Your Free Outdoors Next Gen indicators. There's a little hole in them. You feed the line uh, loop through, feed the loop back over itself, and you anchor and cinch it down. This allows flexibility, allows you to move the, the indicator up and down the rig. So that's very similar to your conventional rig, which if you're looking at spin rods, whether you're fishing with a subsurface bait or you're fishing with a spinner, like a, like a, you know, a rooster tail or something like that. Uh, if I'm fishing, for example, inline spinner, great. You just attach it to your four to six pound line. Uh, and ideally, you'd like probably uh, in most larger applications, fluorocarbon. But if you're fishing, you know, a really small stream, monofilament's fine too. Or if you're fishing a weighted uh, spinner, then... Um, you're going to want probably a monofilament to counteract some, some of that in certain situations. But that being said, say I wanted to switch up my rig to fish subsurface baits, you know? Well, well that same indicator and or a slip bobber is your best friend. And, and you operate it the same way, especially the ones I like are very simple. So all I do is you take off your, your lure. I won't do it for now because you actually don't need to. And you replace it with the lure you want to start fishing with, or the bait. And depending on how deep you want to go, say you're fishing two foot of water. You typically want to go one and a half to two times the depth. So we're going to start with three foot. You take your line, you fold it over with many of these. You feed it through the indicator or bobber. You feed it back over itself and then you draw it tight. The reason you need to go one and a half times is because when you fish, the current in the bottom of the water is often slower than at the top. And so the bottom will drag and the top will pull. And one and a half gives you enough depth difference to where you usually get down where you need to be. And if you wanted to go back to fishing spinners again, all you do is you take your indicator, you take your slip off, and you're back to fishing. Now after you have the right depth for both rigs, it's essential to find the right weight. Weight is key. Now whether it's your bait or it's your uh, split shot, 
that will get your fly down there or your lure down there or your bait down there, it's important to know not to put it too close. I would say minimum of 10 inches in small streams is probably safe. You won't spook fish. Uh, but also your bait, fly, lure, whatever you're fishing, is going to be more natural if that's what you're going for. So uh, if you're fishing th two foot of water, you have your indicator three foot above your uh, presentation, 15 inches, maybe 12 inches above your presentation, put a piece of split shot. And what I would also suggest is don't clink, uh, crimp it down as hard as you can to start because you can always adjust it slightly from there. You don't want to go too hard because if you crimp, if you crimp your split, split shot down on your line, you are compromising it. That being said, they do make sink uh, tungsten putty. I use that a lot. You can uh, tie a little overhand knot uh, wetted on your line and it, what that does is you can clinch on a little bit or cinch on a little bit of tungsten putty and that will actually act as a piece of split shot. Um, safe for the environment for the most part, uh, but removable and it won't uh, compromise your line. Carrying a variety of different baits, imitations, lures, flies, uh, and gadgets with you to a new stream is often probably the best way to go about finding new water. Um, I would also recommend that if you're trying new water and you're trying to get close to fish, uh, fish as close as you can without spooking fish. One way you can do that is to fish muted or drab colors. In addition, um, try to stay out of the water if you can, uh, but also don't be afraid to really slink in very slowly and, and carefully into the water if you need to get a better angle at a cast. Remember, with trout you don't always get multiple drifts or multiple presentations, so it's important to get it right the first or second time. Hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Please check out the merch. There's also, I have an entire apparel line for, for trout fishing. Uh, it'll be down there or it'll be over there. Uh, also, check the description below for ways you can get your own hat, uh, leather patch hats, as well as uh, other cool perks and things for being a member of the channel. I appreciate uh, everything you guys do for me, and uh, I am listening. The reason this video is being made is because I wanted to put out a better video than the last one that had the similar title. So, um, I appreciate you guys. Please, again, like, subscribe. Check out the other videos in the, the channel and the series we have put, that are, it's coming out right now. But until next time, guys, catch you guys on the flip side, tight lines, and we're out.